So it's preview time again at Timeform Towers where we look ahead to the major racing taking place over the next couple of days and it's a turn of our content editor Ben Fernley on well it's a really good weekend here Ben and you did quite well last time you were here. Yep, um, set the standard, um, <laughs> not promising it's going to be the same sort of thing this, this time around. Um, obviously Newbury starts tomorrow, we've got a decent card, I think there's four that are going to be ITV races so we'll just go through them quickly. Um, I think the first one that, that's going to be televised is the 150 uh, where we've got Willoughby Court and Yanworth um, in the the Berkshire Chase, the Labrooks Novices Chase Grade mm -hmm. 2 that it is now. Um, I think my initial thoughts looking at this is, although Yanworth is the, the best of these over hurdles in terms of, in terms of his rating, um, I think he looks a, a shade too short really at, at, at odds on I think he might be four to five in places um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a very recent market but he was certainly very short um, he's entitled to be a, a, a short enough price for this because he, he, he was the best he was a grade one winning hurdler but coming here on the back of a on the, on the back of a fall is not ideal is it really um, and I just think there's more exciting bets to be had in this race it could be Willoughby Court but again Although I think I think he is very interesting as a chaser. Um, obviously, lightly raced over hurdles. He's one of our horses to follow this year. Will it be caught? Um, he's not necessarily been missed by the market. I suppose a lot of people might, if they're looking to take on Yanworth at odds on, they might just fall upon him. And I wouldn't necessarily um, blame you because he, he jumped jumped left around Huntingdon, mm. um, and he's he's switching back to a left-handed track here so that should really suit him but he wasn't completely convincing that day I know it was his first chasing start but you'd like to see a little bit more encouragement I think if you're going to pile into him at short odds so I think probably Adrian Dupont might be the the bet if you're looking to have a player I think he was about 13 to 2 I think or so yeah, maybe yeah. 7 to 1 or, or so I think obviously he he ended his time over hurdles quite disappointingly but he, like many of these French Nichols imports they're all Essentially embryonic chasers, and he was about one one four five. We had him over hurdles, which would leave him a fair bit to find more than a stone with Yanworth on that bet that bare form. But mm. see it time and time again. It's not usually, it's not always replicated going from from hurdles to to fences. It, it can be, um, you know, some horses can improve for it. Some horses aren't as good over uh, over fences compared to hurdles. So I think he's very much going to make a better chaser than, than he was a hurdler already based on the early signs it was only a, a Fontwell novice that he won but he did do it in very good fashion um, so I think he, if you're looking to have a bet in the uh, the grade 2 uh, Berkshire chase then I would probably recommend Adrian Dupont at about 13 to 2 so Adrian Dupont a lively outsider in the first yeah. televised race on to the second at Newbury um, to be televised on ITV an interesting handicap chase here a 4-1 mm. to one the field Willie Boy the current favourite. What's the sort of picture here? Yeah, I mean, he that was absolutely monstrous performance last time by Willie Boy. Um, he just he he got he was up with a strong pace throughout. It was over the same course and distance, and somehow he just stuck there. I mean, I I, I backed against him that day. He's one of our horses to follow as well, um, but I didn't back him that day because I thought the yard were a bit quiet, and I just thought that maybe he'd need his first run. And, and based on the way the market reacted, he he wasn't really. Sort of backed in any way. Um, I backed um, Henry Parry Morgan that day, and I mean, he. I thought he was going to win because he came there, and 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 Willie Boy had been up with a strong pace for so long. I thought he like, he's got to catch him here in the straight, and he and he just kept going, and that really was a, a serious performance. Um, he's up six pounds, I think, in the weights. Yeah, one one three two to one three eight, which, based on how he did it that day, is probably not going to stop him. Um, and you look at the you look at the opposition. You've got, 007 who he's off one one five two. Um look he ended last season with a good run in a better race in this Aintree, but I think in terms of up and coming up and coming chasers, you've got Willie Boy and Jameson are the two um that that are probably the most interesting. And I think Willie Boy, although although he's favourite, I think he he's probably the one to be with here. Um I think he's about seven to two. I wouldn't advise absolutely piling into him at that price, but I think he's the most likely winner. Okay, so Willie Boy there and um, possibly the most exciting race of the weekend for some people next up. We've got a long distance hurdle. Fascinating here because we've got Thistlecrack yeah. who is getting back into things. Mm. Um, he was on a nine race winning streak, of course, before many clouds beat me. Beat all comers in this discipline. Yeah. In You Know What I Mean, Harry, has he got a rival that can give him some problems here? I think so, yeah. I mean, look, 
look at the look at the ratings here. He's he's twelve pounds clear of of you know what I mean, Harry, on his best hurling form. Obviously, they both contested similar races over the years, but but Thistlecrack has essentially achieved a lot more in what he's done and, and the way he's done it over hurdles. And look, it's one of those. He's he's even money, um, and he has had a tendon injury, which is not one of those injuries that you can take too lightly. I don't think. I mean, I know I know, you know. Trainers bring horses back from similar injuries all the time, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be completely convinced that he's going to be the same horse um, yet until we see it. Um, no, nothing against a yard or anything like that, but it's just the fact that tendon injuries can be so tricky. Um, but look, he's he was favourite for the Gold Cup last year when he before he before he got that injury, and let's hope that he, he shows up and he's just as good this time around. Um, but. I think I think we are going to have a race here because he's coming back off a break. Um, he's obviously had those problems. He's not going to want to have a really hard race. I don't think first time up, considering he's got um, you know more things in the pipeline. So I think this this is a really really interesting race. I know I know you, you know what I mean. Harry's got to give weight away, give six pounds to him, which might well prove crucial. Um, and obviously on the adjusted ratings, Thistlecrack's well clear. But I do think it's going to be very competitive between the two. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a no bet race. Um, I would just say err on the side of caution with Thistlecrack just because he's had that tendon injury um, and he is going to be a short price because he's technically is the best horse in the race. Um, so I'd say I'd say a no bet really there. Um, but it's, it's definitely just one to enjoy, isn't it, that race? Uh, last but not least on the Friday is a, a big field handicap hurdle here headed by Ben Eagles who... Is he in, he's a hit horse to follow this yeah, year? Yeah, we've got two horses, two of our horses to follow in this race. Um, ben Eagles is one of them uh, and he's currently around the sort of favoritism um there's a few horses that that are around that sort of five to one mark um forza milan is another one that's also a horse or in our horses to follow book and i think he could probably be the the bet here um i mean ben eagles shapes to me like he wants a, a real real strong test of stamina um i mean he stepped up to to, th to three miles over this course and distance last time in newbury they didn't go particularly fast and um and he just he just didn't get to the bottom of him essentially, and he finished third. It was a respectable run, and he is going to improve again. Um, but there's not much pace on here, and that would be a worry. I think he'll want either further than three miles, or he'll want three miles on really really deep ground when there's a strong pace on or something like that. So um, I think Forza Milan's probably the one to be with. I mean, he's again he's improved for going up in up in trip as well. Um, it was a, be a career best last time at Aintree. He's a full brother to one for Arthur, who won the uh, Grand National, of course. So he, in terms of pedigree, very interesting. And he's he's going to be one of those horses that is going to progress, you know, throughout his his life essentially. If he if he follows in his in his brother's footsteps, um, he he ran really well last time at Aintree. He travelled strongly. Um, based on that, you'd think that the the lack of a strong gallop would would wouldn't really count against him just based on how he how he travelled that day um, so I think Forza Milan's probably the most interesting one in, in this race um, Ben Eagles I'd keep an eye on him for another day um, Boyhood that's the, the other one that's up around the top of the market Tom George's runner I think he essentially won a pretty poor race at Lingfield last time um, and although he's, he's lightly raced and, 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 and represents a top yard he's up £7 and that in this better race I think that could find him out um, so yeah I'll, I'll go for Forza Milan he's our top rated in that um, he's one of our horses to follow as well so hopefully he can uh, he can go in so Forza Milan 7-1 seven, seven to one at the moment for yep. the final good race good price definitely I think. yeah um, on, we're going to touch quickly on the, the two main races on Saturday yep. starting with the fighting fifth which mm -hmm. at Newcastle which usually gives us a, a champion hurdle clue one way or another and well, it, it looks like a penalty kick for Bouvier on the betting. So I think the rights, the two questions really, mm. the first one being, can anything get him off the bridle? And also, considering Fahim's come back um, a couple of weeks ago, mm. how impressive do you think he needs to be to assert his status as the one to beat? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a race that on paper isn't very interesting because we've got, you know, not much of a challenge against Bouvier. Um, but it is interesting for that point that you mentioned because we've got the fact that Fahin's come back. You can, we can hopefully get some sort of time comparison or something like that, which we've already had. Obviously, the Fahin's recorded a very strong time figure. We've just started doing those jumps time figures. Um, we just started releasing them, and um, 
and Fahin's was very strong when it were on the, on his comeback run. Um, Bouvardet has got a, a decent a decent time figure to his name from when he won the champion hurdle, but Fahin's was better than that. So if you're comparing them like that on what they've done today, Fahin, as well, obviously people expect that to be the case, but he is the better horse, mm. Fahin. Um, it was probably not the most competitive renewal of the champion hurdle last season, and Bouvardet very much took advantage of that. Um, so it'll be interesting hopefully they'll both get to Cheltenham and they'll be able to clash because I think that looks like the first time that they are going to clash um, we, we're unlikely to see them you know clash heads before that because there's a few options for Heen's got plenty of options in Ireland um, and Bouvardere won't be won't be raced that much I doubt over here he'll have a, he'll have a couple of runs um, and, and then go straight there um, I'd say Look, it's going to be interesting just to see how far he wins by and how impressive he is but there's not a lot to be gleaned from it overall um, just based on the the, the, the opposition really um, he's £17 clear of Irving who who does obviously run well in this race and, and, and won it last uh, a couple of seasons ago no it was last season wasn't mm. it yeah yeah sorry it was last season beat Apples Jade so look that's that's a a yardstick, I suppose, and he's usually fairly reliable near the start of the season. This is his sort of time of the year, isn't it? So we can get some gauge of the performance rate uh, based based on that. So, um, but yeah, it, it should technically be a walkover for him, for for he uh, a Bouvardere here. Sorry, not for him. He would walk walk over as well probably in, in more impressive fashion. Interesting for sure. And last but not least is that the first running of the Lubrooks Trophy, newly mm-hmm. named, of course, former the Hennessy and. Loads of names in here. American was one of the most exciting novices last year towards the end of the season. Got Whisper, who was just touched off at Cheltenham. Coney Gree, a former Gold Cup winner. But in total recall, have we? is it just a case of there being a well-handicapped one in here? Yeah, I mean, he, he could he could well, but he's still very much in the sort of unknown quantity. Um, I mean, he bolted up in that, in that Munster National. The form's worked out quite well. Alfred Zobos, I think, won a race since. Um, so it's... He's he's got a huge hike in the weights. Um, he was off one two nine there, and he's eighteen pound higher. But I mean, it's just one of those. It's obviously a very positive trainer switch. The the Sandra Hughes to, to Willie Mullins one. Um, he was really well back last time, and and he and he destroyed them really. Um, he's not he's not really had many goes in 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 handicaps um, at all over fences. Look, there's there's probably going to be a lot more to come from him and. and on paper and in terms of ratings, he does look pretty formidable at the top of the market. But having said that, there's there's loads of interesting ones just in behind him. I think um, got single farm payment, who is I think that that run at Cheltenham was a perfect um, a perfect way to set him up for this. Mm. Um, I think he's only been put up a pound. He was easy to back late on. It it just smacks to me of a, of a prep run in, in in with this race in mind, which I like to see. He was a he was a novice last season. Finished second in the Ultimate Handicap Chase, um, beating a short head by on Tom Paul too, who was obviously trained to the minute for that race. Whereas Single Farm Payment had come through the season and and basically just just run where 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 his trainer wanted him to, rather than have that have himself laid out for that one that one race at, um, in March. Um, so I think there's a lot to like about Single Farm Payment. It'll be interesting to see the the ground um, because. I think quicker ground would definitely count against American. Um, it might well be. I think I looked at the weather forecast. Temperatures are not really getting above zero tomorrow, mm. or it looked like that anyway. And maybe not today. Um, obviously, people live nearby; they might know different. Um, but this is when I looked a couple of days ago. Um, so it could be that although there's not much rain, the ground is just going to be holding and testing, um, which would obviously be fine for for American. Um, who I think is really exciting again. He missed Cheltenham last year um, just to, because of the ground. Um, he definitely, his trainer Harry Fry has said repeatedly that he um, that he does need digging the ground. He's quite a fragile horse, but I think he's again really interesting. If I had to pick one of the three, I don't think there's much between the three. Total Recall is the top rated. He's well clear on ratings, um, so obviously would be strong on him. I would if it came up good ground, and I'm I'm not obviously don't have the benefit of that now but if it came up good 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 to soft something like that um well good to soft soft or similar or on the quick side of good i probably would um back single farm payment myself um because i think total recall his form most of his form and that form last time was on a softer surface so he's got i'm not saying he doesn't act on a on a good surface um, but he's got that to prove um and he is a short price and i think american if it came up 
fairly quick. I think that would definitely count against him. So if it came, if it comes up fairly quick, I, I will be back in single farm pay with myself if he's around six or seven to one. Um, but it's a really good race. It's so deep. Uh, it's just what you want in a Hennessy. As you mentioned, we've got, like I said, Coney Gree heading the weights. Um, Whispers not without a chance for a, a yard. who have done really, really well in, in the Hennessy, you know, going back you know, a number of years. I was just doing the thing on Bob's Worth earlier for our blast from the past for the uh, the website and, and you know he, he won that obviously with after winning the RSA he came here won this then won the Gold Cup don't think Whispers obviously of, of quite of his calibre but he's still likely races as, as a chaser and he might well um, still improve um, but yeah overall a, a really good race I would just probably myself go for single farm payment um, on the day if it comes up fairly quick uh, interesting so if you had to pick out a best bet over the next couple of days, it doesn't have to be one of the six we've chosen. If you've got a yeah, I'd say, your sleeve. I'd say um, I'd say Forza and Milan will be if you can get thirteen to two or so tomorrow. I think that's you know you can't really go too far wrong with that tomorrow at Newbury. Um, and also there's a horse I don't know what sort of price it's going to be. There's a horse in the one o'clock at Doncaster tomorrow um, called Rio Bravo uh, for Graham McPherson. I backed this horse last time when it when it ran at, at Exeter and, and essentially it, it's gone two to one in running, travelled really well and it's just got completely tired um, and, and pulled up in the end but he shaped much better than, than pulled up would suggest. Um, he he essentially just found it too much of a slog on, you know, Exeter can be so testing um, and it was only his handicap debut. He's on, he's back in trip which will suit, he's quite a keen goer. Um, he races uh, it's good good ground as well which will help him so that's in the one o'clock Rio Bravo I'd say that's my my best bet tomorrow and I haven't looked at all of Saturday's racing um, but that's definitely one that I'll be looking forward to, to backing hopefully tomorrow great stuff could be a gem then in Rio Bravo uh, thanks very much Ben and hopefully three winners again this week <laughs> yeah <laughs>